All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Friday, May 15th, right? Yeah, that's it. Oh my goodness. May 15, 2020, and I am your host, Kim Matina, and I am a Google certified trainer and educator, as well as a gold product expert and a technology teacher. And this is a shout out to my friend, Jesse, um, because he said I should say it and that I am an author as well Yay. to my new book called Stepping Up to Google Classroom that Cal Alice Keeler and I wrote. So I did it. I did it, Jesse. I did that just for you. So welcome to the show, Pam. I'm so happy to have you on. Good to be on again. Yeah. So Pam comes from comes to us from South Carolina. She mm -hmm. is an instructional coach in a K-8 school district or school. This is her 23rd year in education, and she's been a special education teacher in an elementary and middle school, as well as a first grade teacher mm -hmm. and a personalized learning coach. Yes. Pam yes. is a Google certified trainer. She is a Wakelet ambassador, and I know she does a lot of um, uh, moderation with Casey Bell in mm -hmm. her Shake Up Learning community group. And she is the co-moderator for PD for You and Me on Twitter every Saturday from 8.30 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the morning. And she also has a blog, spedtechgeek.com, where she shares all of her resources and mm -hmm. information about technology integration. So thanks for joining, Pam. I'm so happy to have you on. Thanks for having me. I I have to say I am so I'm so thankful that you and I agreed on Monday to reschedule yes. the show. <laughs> we weren't feeling it. <laughs> we weren't feeling it. And um, you know, we were honest with each other and we told each other, you know, we were really uh, burnt out from the day. We had a lot of other stuff going on. And it wouldn't have been fair to each other and to the audience to do a half fast show. So that's why we rescheduled it for Friday afternoon. So thank you for being honest. And, uh, you know, that's how we have to we have to be honest with each other these days. And uh, I appreciate it. So thank you. Of course. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know you introduced, um, you know, I introduced you, but you know, mm -hmm. tell us what you do and uh, what you're gonna go over today. Okay, well, um, the another benefit of waiting is um, I started to create a coaching choice board for myself to use um, just because I found myself helping teachers at random times and it wasn't, it wasn't as easy to figure out who needed what and when. Uh, especially in a K through eight school, um, we have over sixty teachers, um, and there's only one of me. So, and that's a wide range of grade levels and um, just different skills that they need. Um, we don't have a technology coach, so I kind of end up being that person as well. Um, so, and it's kind of hard to separate instructional instruction and technology anymore, anyway. So, it's really just you know, we, as we always talk about how we use the technology for instruction. So that is why I came up with the um, coaching choice board. And then um, this week, I was able to write a, a guest blog post for Teach Boost um, on the coaching choice board. So it worked out well because now I can share that with everybody. Um, but it's just kind of it's an overview of what it is, how I use it. But I thought today I can kind of get into more of how I create it. Um, and like the tools that I use, because it's Google Slides, Google Drawings, Google Forms. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of tools that you kind of mix together for some app smashing to make it work. Well, so. I am so um, you know I think this is a great um, topic to to share because um, anybody that is in ed tech right now, whether you're you know a technology teacher mm -hmm. or um, a technology coach or a technology specialist. Uh, right now, like we're all getting, um, you know, pulled in different directions to provide professional development and trainings for staff and, um, you know, just to support them or whatnot. So I think this actually comes in at a good time um, because it'll allow the, the, the attendees of your training session to pick what they want and what their needs are. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of zone in and target that. And they they can actually, it's self-paced, right? I'm thinking it's self-paced. Yeah. 
you know, so they can go through it themselves. So I, I think this is for me, I'm really interested um, to see how you uh, how you laid it out and um, in hopes that I can implement something like this as well, because um, like I said, I think it's, you know, the time, the times in education now, I think things are just very demanding on right. people in our position. And if you can kind of have some type of handle on it mm -hmm. and give choice and allow them to control their own learning and kind of, you know, organize it and then give it back to them. I think it takes away from, it takes you out of the equation and right. you give them the control. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm really curious to see what you did. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. And it's good for teachers too, because just to see how I use it as a coach, they can also, because, you know, I mean, once you go in, you might get one little tip and be like, oh, I know how I can use this. And just seeing how you can get kids to go through a slide template and get to different things that they want to, you could use it really for anybody. But um, so just the structure of it can be used for by anybody. So exactly. Good, good yeah. point. Good point. Yeah. Um, okay. But then I'll, um, I'll share my screen so that way I can get, and I'm going to show you my, um, my actual slide version um, in the notes. I think we'll have a template that teachers can, or coaches can make a copy of. Um, but I'll just go through mine so that way you can see, um, hold on a second. Okay. So you can see what mine looks like overall. Um, let's see. I will present this just so that way you can see this image that I have here. I did do that in Google drawings. So that way I could have this as a background and how I came up with all these different topics was based on things that were basically that the expectations I already had as a coach, the things I had to do as far as like modeling and research, lesson planning, evaluation support. So like the rubric that they have to use when they get evaluated, um, just data analysis. And then we also are a school that's um, starting to implement, implement some personalized learning and there are different components of it. So there's student ownership, there's learner profiles, there's learning pathways and flexible learning. So I kind of wanted to make sure people had a choice as to um, basically where they're starting because they may not be ready for all of it. So this way they can choose. Um, the dynamic learning framework and the reason why I have this here is that we had Casey Bell come to our school last um, October. Um, so choice boards became a really big thing after that because um, that's the easiest way to jump on. And so the dynamic learning framework was one of the things that we started using to start integrating technology um, into our daily lessons, which was quite timely. <laughs> um, and then all my Google stuff, of course, Google Classroom, Google Drive, um, Google Forms, Sheets, Drawings, Slides, Sites. Um, and then I have one that's just a coaching cycle if they want to, to work on planning or if they want to work on instruction. Um, their environment, um, professionalism, and really that's just basically becoming that lifelong learner um, and always trying to get better. And then um, blogging for, we wanted, I kind of wanted to make sure that if teachers wanted to share what was going on, I kind of want to get them inspired to do some blogging on their own or using social media or just mentoring in general. Um, and that way the mentoring in general would just be what do you need? Anything. If it's not one of these choices, then just tell me what you need. Right. I you have that here. There. Right. Yeah. So those are all my basic ones. And then all I did was I just created it as a background. So you know how you can add, choose an image to add a background. So I added that as a background. And then um, if I click on this box, you can see it says slide two, and then uh, this is slide three. There's nothing in that box. It's really just a transparent box on top of the picture. So if somebody was to make a copy of this, they could just change the background, and then these would automatically go to the other slides. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. So the background you said you did in Google Drawings, uh -huh. and you downloaded that as a PNG file. Yes. And then you you added that as the background for the entire um, presentation, or is it just for just for the slide? And then I would just I just duplicated it. So 
Um, I think if you did, because since it's linked to slides, um, like if I click on here, actually I'll do somewhere further in, slide nine, I'll click on that and it will go to slide nine. Um, so, and I'll just click present one more time. So then it gives a description of what it is. Um, and I added a little house. This is from um, the Noun Project, which is like the best thing ever. Yeah, that's a, actually a really good resource. It really is. Um, and this one, I do have a paid version, but I do have it um, where it's cited. Um, so then if you just click on that little house, it goes back to the main screen. Oh, okay. So it goes back to home. Yes. Um, so if they're just kind of trying to see what it is that they want, if I click on here, you can see the description pops up, like what ideas, what that might mean, go back to home. Um, and then if the sign up here, oh, hold on, let me see. So this this presentation file uh -huh. is basically a menu. Yes. So they see they click on an option and then mm -hmm. a description comes up and then they go back to the to the menu, the choice board. Right. And okay. so if someone was using this template, they would just um, change the description, but the slides would stay the same. So once you change your background, um, you could just change the description per page and they're just linked to go back home. Right. Um, and then let's see. Okay, one of the things I have on here, oh, that's just for coaching. Um, so let me go back. I'll present. I really this. like the layout of that. Thanks. Linking it is probably the hardest part is going back and just linking it to each page, which is why the template should be helpful because then all you have to do is change your background. It's already linked. Um, and then let me just go back home. Okay, so they get this and I have this linked in my, at the bottom of my email um, signature but then I also have it on a Google site. That's my coaching site. Um, I have it all sorts of places. For so staff now, to be able to access it, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, and so I've got this little sign up here button. And if you click on that, it goes to the Google form. Um, and it's just a choice board um, request. Um, I do have a doc linked here. And this actually goes to, hold on a second. This is basically what we got as instructional coaches kind of our expectations, which, you know, I want people to know what the expectations are of me because some of the things we have control over and some we don't. So like everything in blue is something that I kind of have some control over in the building where some of the other ones, I don't have an option, but I want them to know that that's there. Um, and that is linked. So if you want to make a copy of it and use it, you know, update it for your own, that's fine. It's just a nice way to be transparent about what the expectation is that you have anyway. Um, and then, so this is a Google form and basically they can pick after they're looking at the slides, um, they can pick, let's say I want to work on personalized learning. And then I pick that, go to next based on that option. So I have it branching and I can show you the edited version. So that way you can see what that looks like. Um, but then it goes to the personalized learning now within personalized learning, which area are you ready to work on? Are you ready to work on student ownership, learner profiles, pathways, or flexible learning environment? So I'm gonna do student ownership, click next. Um, and then all it does is how can I support you in the area you cho chose and additional questions or concerns and submit. So it's super short on their end. I'm going to open my form that I can edit just so that way you can see all the branching options. Um, let's see. Okay. So, so here you made yeah. a, a Google uh, form and you uh, created sections. Yes. Right. So based on the question, the response of the question, it'll jump to a specific section. Yes. So this is another part that was a little time consuming and, um, you know, that, but once it's set up, it's only four questions for the teachers. Right. So that was what I really wanted it to be is super simple for somebody to fill out. And that way I know what they need. And I also have I can keep track of it. Um, so you can see how like modeling goes to section five, like all these different things, um, support description. And then you can continue the next. Pet. So here's one section, personalized learning. And based on what they chose here, it goes to another section. So, yeah. Yeah, Google Google Forms, the branched um, the branched Google Forms are mm -hmm. they're time consuming. 
they are time consuming. And I do wish, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you know how an easy way to make a copy of a form easily where somebody could use it. But I feel like the only way, at least the only way I know is usually that you can add them as a collaborator and then they can make a copy. But I, unless you know of another way to do that. <laughs> I don't, I did read something somewhere that you can make a copy of it, but off the top of my head, I don't, I don't right. remember. Well, somebody can help us, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> somebody knows, put it into the uh, comment in the, yes, uh, in definitely. the video. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know where I read it. I don't remember, I don't have a good memory. Um, <laughs> unless I'm doing it all the time, you know, I right. forget. But yeah, I, I, I branched Google Forms. There are a lot of work when you're mm -hmm. creating them because you have to test and make sure that the flow and the logic right. is all correct. Um, but it is really super cool. It is cool. And then of course I get to see, I only filled it out once myself, like as an example, then I can kind of see what the percentage of my time is spent. Um, so this is good data for your admin or good data for you. Um, or even if you have to rationalize your position. <laughs> um, so we have to do that too. We, yeah, you do. So, and then I just have, you know, of course all the answers um, I can see in the Google form in the Google sheet. And then I can always, I use this, I always add a checkbox. Um, so that way, as I go through and follow up, I can make sure I could just click the little checkbox. And um, I know I've already either talked to the teacher or whatever. Um, and I do have it set where it notifies me if somebody fills it out. Right, right, right. So, so yeah. let me ask you something, Pam. When yeah. somebody fills out the form mm -hmm. and <clears throat> they don't remember, like you showed in your example, uh, personalized learning, mm -hmm. and then there was mm -hmm. four, uh, four choices. Right. They don't remember what they went to before. Like if they picked one and they completed it, now it's like three months later and they want to do another one. Right. They don't remember what they did, you know, three months ago. Do they I, do ask have, you? I actually have, um, and I can show that too, but in the Google form, I actually have it where it collects the email address. And then I have it where the response request is automatically sent out. So that way they, whatever they filled out, they got an email also. Okay. So, then at least they have record of what they asked for. Um, and I would follow up right away anyway. And then I keep track of that stuff myself just in my own coaching notes. Um, so that way, if they did fill it out again, I would still touch base with them anyway. And, you know. <laughs> you would, so you would have to actually uh, check the form and, you know, go through or sort it out and go through the responses. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I guess I could try to get creative and have different copies, but I think oh, it's, no. easy, it's easier to sort things in a Google sheet. Yeah, I <laughs> try to create anything else like that. But yeah, I agree. I wouldn't make it any more complicated than you need it to be. You know what I right. mean? So then they so then where do you, do you put any of your information about the session into the response sheet or somewhere for documentation? Um, and like, so what do you do after it's over? This is where, so once we go through our, um, you know, like our cycle, like I get to meet with them and then we set up a plan, then I would just link, um, I can do the individual um, responses and I can always link that. I have a, a Google sheet that has a tab for each teacher. And so I could just link their response, like, you know, save it as a PDF and just link it as their, their option. So I guess technically I could show the teachers that way too, because course, anything that I type up, I show them too, just so that way they know what it is that I keep track of. I don't want them to feel like I'm, you know, saving things just to show admin or something like that. So yeah. So like, so all of your interactions with a teacher when they fill out this form is face to face. Well, t typically face to face. Yeah, typically face to face. So as soon as they fill it out, then I would touch base with them. Um, and then we would actually sit down and make a plan as far as if it's going to be something that I have to come in to help them out with, or if it might just be resources or, you know, so we go from there and that would be the face to face. I guess now it could be, you know, like an email touch base, maybe schedule a Google meet. Um, it would just depend on, I guess, which one they were asking for. I mean, modeling, that might be a little bit harder right now. Um, 
but most of the options I have in there are fairly easy to um, to do, at least with a Google Meet, for them to understand what it is that they want to do next or what their plan is. Right, right. Yeah, well, that's that's actually, um, you know, uh, it's a creative way to offer choice for te for teachers or staff. Right. Now, do you survey the do you survey them to get the topics for the choice board? That's um, I did. I have originally, um, and then I do a potty PD for the school anyway. Um, and so in that, I do have a question that I ask them as far as like, what do you need more of? Um, you know, was this helpful? So I just ask a few questions here and there. Um, so I can use that. But then for the most part, because there are so many options in there, um, a lot of it is something that they're, it's kind of general anyway, like the Google PD stuff. It might be something specific to what they need, um, like subject area wise, but it's still, I want to use Google Classroom or I want to use Google Drive or um, like when it comes to just lesson planning in general, it, that's pretty general. So right, our conversation right. can kind of set that up. Right. Um, and I did... Let me see. Okay, I can share my screen one more time because I have the coaching, the actual choice board, the Google drawing one. Okay. Um, so that way I could share that too. Okay. Okay, so this is the um, coaching um, bingo board. And basically it just had, you know, each, each of these are squares. So if somebody even wanted to use this template, they could just type in each box and change what it is that they want. Um, this is just my little bit moji, little school hashtag. Um, this one right here, I don't have the sign up. Um, click here to sign up. That's not on here because um, you can always add that if you want to. So each of those are just little squares. Um, you know how you can create the shapes and their text boxes? That's yeah. basically what I did. So that way I can kind of spread them out evenly. Um, and I can change the text and then I just do the file download as a PNG and then I can just put that as my background in slides. Yeah, I, I, I think it's clever. I think it's a um, it's a nice way to give the uh, choice back to the staff. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would probably, you know, see and read their uh, request. And then if they had a request that I already like maybe did mm -hmm. my training on, I would refer them to the YouTube playlist. <laughs> right, you could do that for sure. You, know, you can put links. I would think you would be able to put links mm -hmm. somewhere and then right. uh, you know give them the YouTube playlist or whatnot, and then uh, they can watch those videos on their own. You know? Right, yeah. Um, and I, I do have Wakelet because with the Potty PD that I do, and I think that's what we were talking about last time we did um, a podcast together. Um, I did the potty PD with Wakelet. And so I always have that version that I can send to them as well. Um, and a lot of the trainings I do all put together in one. So it's easy to share kind of a collection um, or like you said, a playlist or whatever. So there's lots of lots of ways you can get it to them. Yeah. I mean, I agree. You know, you just have to find what works for you mm -hmm. and just stick with it. Um, you know, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel when you have something that's working well. So, right. you know, yeah. and I, I, I think like I, I may need to adapt to something like this. Um, seeing that uh, in the situation that we're in with the virtual learning and remote learning or whatnot, um, I may end up maybe borrowing your mm -hmm. template and then just, you know, tweaking it um, for the, for my needs. Um, right. Because the like I I um, I use Google Classroom as a platform mm -hmm. for um, teachers, and I put all of my resources in there and collaborate with them in there. Um, you know, sharing uh, material posts and announcements and different um, you know different resources. So like that's kind of my my hub for them. Right. But uh, you know. I like the I like having the the choice. Right. You know, that's that's what I'm coming up with the topics right now based on the need. Mm -hmm. But I'm not giving them a choice. Like I'm giving them a choice 
of a schedule <laughs> that right. I planned out the topic yes. for. I, I didn't give them the choice to create the topic. If they say, hey, right. kid, I need, I need to learn how to do this, of course, I'll put it in my schedule. Right. But I'm not giving them like a sketch, like a choice board. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? This, one, this one I think I use more towards because even thinking about new teachers, they don't even know what they need. Because right. It's like, OK, what are some of my options? Or we have an instructional coach. What does that mean? What does she do? Yeah. And <laughs> she doesn't then, have then a class. She can go to the bathroom whenever she wants. That's really the main thing they notice. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I like, I like even, I like that whole idea, even using it as like the classroom teacher and using it with right. your students. Mm -hmm. So like, even if you take the coaching out of it and you right. use it with your students, how cool is that to allow them to pick an option and then go to a branched Google form to right. create like a digital story or mm -hmm. an adventure or something. That's, yeah. that's, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, or all the different breakout EDUs yeah. or I mean, you could type anything in there and I mean, you could change the color and have it where all the reading is pink, all the math is blue or, I mean, th there's so many things you can do with it because it's really just a choice board, um, but has a little bit more purpose to each one. It's almost, it's almost like a hyper doc, but not quite. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that before it's like a hyper slide. I'm thinking it as right. a hyper slide because mm -hmm. you got the main slide and um <laughs> dog, sorry. Because <laughs> you have the main slide and then you're and then you're actually clicking on the link to read the description. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So which is really cool. I really do like that. Um, but yeah, definitely if you if you don't mind, like share your mm -hmm your your um your template and your yeah. uh, google drawing file if you don't mind and then um at least at least it'll give me something to tweak and think about moving forward for my staff in uh september um you know and, and at least give them more flexibility on what their needs right. are yeah i'll share everything in there um you know the the google drawing so that way it'll force to make a copy change color change whatever um, the only thing we have to figure out is how to make a copy of the form, but I, um, <laughs> I'll look it up. I, I think yeah. there is a way to make a copy of it. I just, not off the top of my head. I don't right. know how to do it because yeah. I don't use Google forms in that respect where I make a copy of it, but I read it somewhere that you can. So when right. we disconnect, we will, uh, I'm going to look at that. Okay. Um, you can ask Alice. She'll know. She, and uh, you know what? Yeah. And she, well, of course she would definitely know, but I don't know if I read it on her blog or right. if it was somewhere else. I saw it somewhere okay. and you I just figure don't, it out. <laughs> Cause that would save, that would save a lot. I oh mean, yeah. Once it's all created, all you have to do is change your areas. Like, you know, what the, the tech topics. is. Yeah. So then people wouldn't have to do as much cause it does take a long time. And I use like, I'll do an incognito window. Yeah, and, and test it out, and then ants and test it that way, so that way I can make sure it links the right way. Because it's just it's hard to do it in your head without trying. Clicking yeah, no, you have sure it works. Definitely have to click through it and, and make sure it all works. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But yeah, well, when we disconnect, I'm going to look it up. So. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> but thanks for sharing. I, I think of that course. was a clever, a clever and a great idea to share. And I appreciate you taking the time to to go over all that. Um, what I'm going to do too confusing. <laughs> I, I followed you. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping that others did as well. I, 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 you know, if I'm able to follow you and go okay. through it, then you're good. <laughs> so, um, what I'm going to do now is just wrap up the show real quick. Okay. Um, uh, let me share my screen real fast. All right. All right. Can you see my screen? Yep. All right. So, whoops, whoops, wrong, wrong website. So if you want to visit the Sweet Talk, you can go to my website at thesweettalk.com and uh, you will see on the homepage the latest episode of the Sweet Talk. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter uh, at the Tech Lady. Um, you can uh, subscribe on podcasts, Spotify, Apple 
Podcasts, Google Play, Google Podcasts as well, and sign up for the newsletter. Um, but you'll see the latest episode and podcast here. Um, the new Stepping Up to Google Classroom book is out, written by me and Alice Keeler. It's available on Amazon. It's uh, a great beginner's book um, to help people get started using Google Classroom. Um, you can see all the latest episodes on the episode page. You can watch or listen as well. Um, you can also find out more about Jamboard. If you click on the Jamboard page, you'll see all of my, um, my resources in Wakelet. I just wrote an article for Equipped um, Digital Magazine about Jamboard. And um, if you are using Jamboard, please share your idea with me. Um, I'd love to have your idea featured in my idea for Jamboard um, resource. So this is the form for that. Um, and basically that's it. So with that said, let me go back to Pam. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again, Pam, for being on. I really appreciate it. And I am, um, you know, grateful for, for you to uh, reschedule and, and to yeah. make it today. So thank it worked you. out better for sure. <laughs> Definitely worked out better. <laughs> so thanks again. And I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.